Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Dialogue. I'm Tamur Shamil. Today is the 10th of Muharram the, of the Islamic calendar. Today, Muslims around the world, they commemorate the martyrdom of Hussain ibn Ali, Hazrat Imam Hussain r.a. and his companions and the family of the Prophet uh, Hazrat Muhammad wasallam. Today, the grandson of Hazrat Muhammad wasallam, he was martyred in Karbala. Hussain ibn Ali Razilatalano fought injustice. He stood against the oppressors. He stood against injustice. Today we are going to pay our tribute to the martyr of Karbala. His companions, his children, his family, the women who were there with him, the family of the Prophet, the family of Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilatalano, and their spirit and their message. Today is the day when Muslims around the world they mourn and they commemorate the uh, martyrdom of Hazrat Imam Hussain and also they revise and they contemplate on the, the very uh, idea of and message of Karbala. Today we are going to pay tribute as I said earlier and also discuss the spirit and message of Karbala. How can we translate this Karbala, the message and spirit of Karbala in today's time? As I said earlier, Hazrat Imam Hussain stood up against injustice. We see injustice today in our societies. We see that happening every day. And anybody who stands against injustice and who also stands for right against wrong is the follower of Hazrat Imam Hussain, is the true follower of Hazrat Muhammad and his family and Hazrat Imam Hussain. We are going to talk about Karbala with our special guest today, our special scholars that I have invited in my show. Our first guest is Pir Mudassir Shah Sahib. He is uh, the president of Saluk, a Sufi think tank. Pir Mudassir Shah Sahib himself is a practicing Sufi and a Sufi scholar as well. Welcome to the show, Thank Pir Mudassir. Our second guest is Mr. Jamshed Iqbal Sahib. He is a peace builder and a writer uh, and a Sufi scholar as well. He has been traveling and meeting Sufis around the world and also a, he understands the message of Karbala and the spirit of Karbala. Welcome to the show, Mr. Jamshed. Our third guest is Mr. Habib, uh, Habib Malik. Uh, Mr. Habib Malik is a scholar of uh, Sufism, scholar of uh, Islamic history as well. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Habib Malik. Thank you very much. Mr. Peter Shah talking about Karbala, the spirit of Karbala. Today is the day when the Muslims around the world, they mourn and they commemorate the incident of Karbala. Hazrat Imam Hussain, Hussain ibn Ali, Razi Allah he stood up against the forces of uh, Yazid, 72 people who stood up against uh, a force of 1,000 men from the Yazid side. This day, how do you see this day and Muslims around the world? How would you pray tribute to Hazrat Hussain ibn Ali Razi Allah Ta'ala? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, thank you, uh, Tamur Sahib, for inviting me and uh, letting me share my views on the topic. It's a great honor to be here, uh, especially on 10th of Muharram, the day of Ashura. Uh, it was not only uh, standing against Yazid is a phenomena, uh, it's a, it was not a political phenomena. It was a moral war uh, where Hussein stood for justice, where Hussein stood for commitment, where Hussein uh, stood for the right and he was standing against injustice, immoralities and the wrong and the commitment was there <clears throat> to, n that was not a fight for me at all. Otherwise, having 72 guys with you or having 72 people with you, mm. mostly women and children, having your six months boy with you, traveling in a desert, going outside, you are not there to fight. And traveling from Mecca to Kufa. Yes. Yeah. Right. You are not there to fight. It's a gesture. You are there to stand with the words. You are there to stand with your commitment. You are there to stand with the free will and withhold your family. 
the significance of the event is more important than the historical occurring of the event. And fortunately or unfortunately, uh, we made this whole event a historical event, rather a moral achievement. We usually uh, pay our tributes in the, those particular 10 days of Muharram. We remember them, we offer our tributes, uh, we gather sometimes and we have a discussion or a remembrance of the event. Right. But we completely forget the message and the message was more loud than the event. The message is still there. The, the, <coughs> if, if you ask me that Karbala was, I will prefer to say Karbala is there. Mr. Jamshed, uh, Peer Mudassir Saab rightly said that this is basically a message and we have to understand the message. Uh, while we talk about the incident of Karbala, we have to translate this incident into what is happening today. Uh, it is more practicable and certainly we have to work on this. It, the message was to stand against the injustice, also to do justice with the people who require it, to be more considerate, to be more compassionate towards people. How do you see the incident of Karbala, Hazrat Imam Hussain, his family and the incident, the whole incident? Well, it is very rightly put by my friend uh, Peer Mudassan Azhar Shah that this is not just an historical event, it's an analogy basically. This is uh, basically a, a kind of universal symbol for us which will keep on guiding us forever. It's basically a struggle between the uh, older dichotomy which is, which is known as uh, good and evil primarily, and the other dichotomy we can build is between the armed and unarmed, between the innocent and militants. There can, we can peel of hundreds of shades from this uh, one event, and the other thing which we were talking about earlier is that uh, it's, uh, if it were a historical event, historical events happen in time and space, they just occur for one time, and their landscape is some geographical area. But I think uh, this event, this tragedy, this incident, it has uh, its ground everywhere. It's happening within us every time. Every time we are standing on means uh, a crossroad, on a moral crossroad. And every time we can get inspiration from this event, from this uh, ahistorical event, from this universal analogy, and it can guide us. It can never fail to guide us means we can get such kind of means inspiration from it. We can, it helps us, it guides us to stay on higher moral grounds, higher spiritual pedestals, and ultimate victory would be ours. It is giving us message every time. This is how I see it. Right. Mr. Habib, uh, Mr. Jamshed talked about how he sees Karbala and the, and the event of Karbala, the incident of Karbala. Uh, this is happening with us, rightly said, and we have the choices uh, each and every second that is passing. We have to make the choices. We have to make the right kind of choices. Hazrat Imam Hussain, Hussain ibn Ali, Razi Allah, he made a choice. And the choice was that he stands with Islam, with the true spirit of Islam, with the true spirit of his grandfather, Hazrat Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was adamant on this point. There was no flexibility from Hussain's point and what Pir Madhusri Shah Sahib said, rightly said that you don't travel from one place to another. He knew that the people of Kufa weren't that welcoming. He received the letters uh, uh, from uh, uh, the uh, Muslim bin Akil, which said that people are con the environment is conducive, but later he came to know that environment was not that conducive. He wasn't traveling from Makkah to Kufa uh, for the fight. And in his last sermon in Makkah, he made it very clear that I might lose my life um, they might kill me, but the thing is that we have to stand with, with justice and we have to stand against injustice. This spirit of Hazrat Imam Hussain, this, this, uh, this idea that he was adamant on his point and adamant on the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how do you see that? Uh, thank you very much, Taimur. Uh, how I, I see this, this uh, entire event, unfortunately uh, events uh, 
turn into rituals and we try to ritualize things. Uh, unfortunately, in, in our religion, this has become a ritual of, you know, mourning Hussein for, for 10 days of, of Muharram. But Hussein's movement, I believe, was a movement against wrongdoing. Uh, the day uh, Imam Hussein started traveling, that was the day, I believe, when, uh, when a phenomena began. This, this was not a war uh, like, you know, people say it. This was not uh, just a war. Just a right. war. I think this was a movement that began, a phenomena that, that, that began. And every day, if we look at it, if, if, if we look, you know, inwardly, I think every day we stand against the, the two choices that, that we have. So I think uh, the message of the event and, uh, you know, the entire... Uh, concept of Karbala is not just that one day or to make a ritual out of it. Every single day we wake up and we have those two choices. We have to make these two, these two choices. So I, I don't think the message of uh, Husseiniyat or Karbala should you know, only be confined in these first 10 days. So that <coughs> beginning of that movement was a movement for the entire humanity, which starts from you know, within every single morning when we wake up. Right. You are a Sufi, a practicing Sufi. Uh, this idea that Hazrat Hussain Razilatalanu, his martyrdom is mourned only by a certain faction of Islam, just by, let's say, the Shias in Islam. I'm, saying, I'm asking this question that our viewers should know more about the common values that Muslims have. It's not just the Shias yes. who mourn Hazrat Imam Hussain Razilatalanu, it's also the Sunnis and all those people who are not Sunnis or Shias, all Muslims, they commemorate this day, they mourn the, the martyrdom of Imam Hussain, what is, the, what is your approach towards this, this sectarian uh, overtone that people talk about sometimes? And what is the Sufi approach towards the sectarianism that has been a problem in our society? Imam Hussain is a symbol of liberty for us all not only for Shias or Sunnis. We all love the hymn. We all love the gesture. We uh, all love that symbolism which uh, we get inspired by uh, the, the, the struggle which he did where he sacrificed his life, not only his life, but the lives of his family. I will not go into the sectarianism. That is not my subject. But uh, as, as, a, as a student of Sufism, I know that every single Muslim, and not only Muslim, every single enlightened human being loves Imam Hussain. Uh, and the inspiration in our daily life we get from Imam Hussain is to stand with justice, to stand on right, say no to any wrong things, even uh, you have to sacrifice the max in your life, whatever it may come, but you have to stand with the, on the right path, that, that, that is the commitment which we uh, uh, get from the inspiration of Imam Hussain's life and his struggle and the life after, and especially when, when he came with the commitment. The level of commitment is admiring for me. The level of commitment is admiring for me. I, I sometimes I lost with the words to express my uh, feelings about uh, the incident which uh, happens there. And unfortunately, today we we just tag ourselves or untag ourselves on the basis of sectarianism. Uh, that is a loss in in our society. Uh, which we have to overcome with. Otherwise, these are our common heritages, and we we are quickly and swiftly going to lose the right on our heritage. Our moral values are now. Now, if I am going to tag my moral values on the basis of my sect, then what about those who are not even Muslims, but they inspire Imam Hussain? They, 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 they are, they are uh, followers of Husseiniyat. And Husseiniyat is not uh, a character, it's, it's 
it's beyond correct. It's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon, as yes. uh, I think Mr. Dimshel said and Mr. Habib, that yeah. this is a phenomenon and we have seen, my question was about sectarianism, yeah. that <clears throat> Sunnis and Shias, many Sunnis and Shias and also the other sects, other than Sunni and Shia, yeah. they arrange processions on Ashkuda. They commemorate this day, they, they mourn the martyrdom of uh, Imam Hussain. Exactly. I have seen it personally in Gilgit, Baltistan, I have seen that in Punjab, I have seen that in Sindh for that matter. The spirit of Hussain ibn Ali Razila Ta'ala invites unity in Islam yeah. and unity uh, around the globe, unity for the mankind. This unity and the message of unity, Mr. Jamshed, what do you, how do you see this? Really? The message of unity by the Prophet of Islam, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hazrat Hussain ibn Ali. I very much agree with uh, Pir Mudassan Azhar Shah when he says that he is, uh, Imam Hussain is a larger than life uh, figure. Absolutely. Such a great figure cannot be contained within sectarian boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's too large, means uh, in uh, means previous uh, my previous uh, means answer to your question, I was saying the same thing. We need to universalize it. And yeah. luckily, it's happening all around the world. You were just talking about Gilgit Baltistan. There are several Hindu sects which, uh, which involve in this kind of passion play, which we call Tazia. And interestingly, you know, in non-violent struggles, means Gandhiji has been writing letters to Tolstoy, and Tolstoy was also impressed by this incident. And they have uh, learned from these bigger movements of non-violence all around the world, has learned something very vital from the life of Hazrat Imam Hussain, from his sacrifice. And that very struggle has been translated into philosophy of non-violence. And now there is uh, new humanism. The old humanism, you know, old humanism was very much rational. In its, in its character, but this new humanism is very much spiritual in its, in its character. And they, their leader, uh, one of the very good books he wrote uh, in recent years was Humanizing the Earth. And I would uh, love you to go through that. And it's a spiritual message, and that uh, message of nonviolence is very much caused on the philosophy of nonviolence, which is basically based on the same kind of struggle. This is how the world is seeing it in such a large picture, in such a large picture, and such a great personality like uh, Hazrat Imam Hussain cannot be contained in history, I mean, sectarian boundaries, and even in history. I means in history, whatever event is placed in history basically becomes obsolete, becomes outdated. And now, today, we are talking about that event, relevance of that event. It means it is ever fresh. It's happening every time. Every time so right. mm. we need to contextualize it with our universal inner and behavioral needs as well. And one more thing, which I means uh, we were talking about morning uh, means mm. which mm. we are doing nowadays. Uh, I'm uh, nowadays working on some kind of curriculum on, on social cohesion. And there is a saying that if you cry with a friend, if you cry with a friend on some tragedy, that will create an eternal bond. So when the whole humanity is mourning on this martyrdom, it's creating a bond. Absolutely. It's creating a bond between us. We have been mourning for just one person, for a family, for a single family. And for the first time in means uh, once in a whole year, we are crying for a family. Everyone is feeling pain of something. And this is the universal message of empathy as Absolutely. well. Right. It is nourishing uh, our capacity to feel the pain of others. This is what we are nurturing and nourishing today. That's so, right. And, and the followers of Hazrat Imam Hussain, the followers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they don't mourn Imam Hussain just on the 9th and 10th of uh, Muharram. They don't just follow the Prophet and Hazrat Imam Hussain on the 9th and 10th of Muharram. For them, it is a lifestyle. For yes. them, Absolutely. This is what life is. You know? yes. This is what the message is, and this is what their message is, the message of their followers. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Habib Malik, talking about peace, Islam stands for peace. It literally means peace. Hazrat Imam Hussain, he stood for peace, and he said to the, to the forces that were there to fight with him, he said that I stand for peace, and my message is peace. If you accept that, we are good to go. We'll be having peace in our society. Since then, in today's time, are we on the right track, our people, our society? How can we make 
the message of Hazrat Imam Hussain and Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their message more practicable in our society. What measures can be taken to make it more uh, practicable? Um, okay, I think uh, this this entire uh, you know debate goes into a, a, a you know bigger debate of how you know world peace can be. Uh, achieved just before the show, as as we were talking, uh, you know the concept. Like like my friends here said that uh, Hussein and and you know rightly said the, the phrase larger than life. Some figures become larger than life. Some phenomena become larger than life. Hussein and Husseiniyat transcends uh, Islam or Shiaism. It it is for the entire humanity. So uh, I think the implementation of Husseiniyat is is when we actually go deep down. We study Husseiniyat and we preach Husseiniyat. Uh, Husseiniyat, uh, unfortunately, it has been you know associated with a certain sect in in Pakistan, but Husseiniyat is practically humanity. Uh, uh, Husseiniyat is standing tall in the face of adversity, no matter what. Like uh, uh, you know, uh, a poet rightly said, if I can uh, sure. say, "Ye kaun zee vakar hai, bala ka shah sawar hai." कि है हजार कातिलों के सामने डटा हुआ सो द मैसेज इज दैट यू स्टैंड टॉल इन द फेस ऑफ एडवर्सिटी रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वॉट यू गोइंग टू लूज रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वॉट यू मे गेन इफ यू यू नो साइड विद द टायर सो आई थिंक इफ इफ द इंटायर यू नो यूनिवर्स और वेर एवर यू नो देर इज एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इफ हुसैनियत कैन बी प्रीच्ड आई थिंक पीस is is definite to come definite to come fir mudassir shah peace islam peace and the message of the imam husain razi allah taala is also peace practicing peace in today's times preaching peace in today's time and making people understand the idea of peace and the idea of karbala and islam how do we do it yeah i would like to comment on husainiyat first and then i'll come on this question about peace uh I'll second my friend uh, Husseiniyat is is something which is a phenomena uh, which is not uh, tagged with the community sect or religion uh, practicing Husseiniyat is on daily basis a, a, a gentleman goes out of his house to earn bread for his children and he opt uh, halal way to earn the food or uh, he 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 does business in a Uh, mannered way not stealing anybody's money not uh, grabbing the land he is on the path of husainiyat he is struggling on a right path he is not uh, damaging the values of society this is husainiyat in day to day life and about peace yes husain was the slogan of peace husain was my inspi- inspiration for peace Hussein is my ideal for peace. The way Hussein stood, and uh, the 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 whole movement was without any militancy or uh, without any arms. He was he was non-violent freedom movement of the history. Hussein was the slogan of non-violent movement. He taught the entire. humanity what are the means of having a non violence movement the way he came out the courage he gave to the whole humanity for the future generations this is the way to opt peace you just don't advocate peace but to struggle for it he he taught me he taught the entire humanity the ways to fight for peace without fighting for peace and that was meaningful at least said to fight for peace and without fighting actually Absolutely. that is that is the the, the real uh, uh, essence of karbala and the essence of islam as well we'll continue our dialogue our tribute to hazrat imam husain razi allah taala anhu to the family of the prophet rasul ekim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the message and spirit of karbala we'll take a break and we'll continue our discussion after this break stay with us
आई कर बला 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 اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بناه مانتا ہوں میں اللہ کی شیطان مردود سے بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شروع اللہ کے نام سے جو بڑا مہربان نہایت رحم والا ہے قل اعوذ برب الفلق کہو کہ میں صبح کے مالک کی پناہ مانتا ہوں من شر ما خلق ہر چیز کی برائی سے جو اس نے پیدا کی ومن شر غاسق اذا وقب اور شب تاریخ کی برائی سے جب اس کا اندھیرا چھا جائے ومن شر النفاثات في العقد اور گندوں پر پڑ پڑ کر پھونکنے والیوں کی برائی سے ومن شر حاسد اذا حسد اور حسد کرنے والی کی برائی سے جب حسد کرنے لگے صدق الله العظيم Welcome back. Today we commemorate the martyrdom of Hazrat Imam Hussain Razir Talano and we also pay tribute to the martyrs of Karbala. Mr. Jamshed, we were talking about Karbala, the message and spirit of Karbala. We were also talking about our society, the Muslim society nowadays, the challenges that we face today, uh, the challenges that the Muslim societies around the world are facing today. How can we walk on the message of, of Karbala? How can we ma make it more practical for us to follow and how can we make our children our next generation understand the message of Karbala well uh, as we were talking uh, about it earlier the message of uh, uh, Hazrat Imam Hussain is the message of non-violence and you know all around the world this non-violence these non-violent movements are building sustainable peace all around the world means no, no non-violence uh, is uh, uh, holistically a political theory and political action all around the world. So the main essence of that can be translated into some kind of political action as well as uh, we can see. And on the other hand, on the other hand, we, the, the key message we get from uh, the life of Hazrat Imam Hussain is that uh, sacrificing one's false ego first of all before before sacrificing your life mm -hmm. you sacrifice your false ego and we see that uh, means practically happening in that event which is known as Vakya Karbobala Vakya Karbala so two main things which two main messages first of all is the non-violent struggle we can learn it from Hazrat Imam Hussain it was the message of non-violence and why we need this message right now on Right. on this point of history because in our societies especially in Pakistan and in the Muslim societies from 1970s onwards we have cultivated an image of militant hero all around the world so which is known as we have developed the concept of militant peity the pious guy would be one who will be militant who would be carrying some swords right. who would be carrying some gun mm. who would be killing someone so this was a paradigm shift which happened. So we can reverse it uh, with the help of with the help of this uh, role model 
as Imam Hussain. Nowadays, Muslim societies all around the world, because we have been tested with the, this radicalization, this violence, this extremism, we need this message of nonviolence. And we need a hero like uh, Imam Hussain, who was non-militant hero, who was a non-militant hero, as compared with the only Imam Hussain can do help us do without uh, the image which we have crafted of militant hero. I think this is the biggest contribution. I, mean, I would like to add um, to it. Rightly said. Uh, unfortunately, our textbooks, uh, as as you said, you know, how can we tell our future generations? Mm -hmm. Our textbooks, unfortunately, are replete with. Uh, heroes with swords and guns. I think this is what we need to change. This is what uh, we need to change. If if you see uh, the curriculum of, of the West, you know, they glorify saints. You know, you have days for saints and, and you have, you know, states named after saints and you have streets and, you know, they really own their saints and they do not glorify uh, warriors of the war field who have guns and tanks and and they they glorify people who have actually you know uh, like mother teresa and saint thomas and you know they have many figures i think we also need to do that and uh, we interestingly need to, uh, this is a very good point people interestingly you right. rightly said that this thing we see in our test books but when we go to the people when we meet the people at the grassroots level you go anywhere in Sindh and punjab people actually uh, uh, they respect their saints. They talk about they saints. Do, yes. People talk about saints, but somehow the textbooks, yeah. they talk about something else. They talk so there's a gap oh. between the people and what is being talked and, to the and people. people this, are, is, this is important. People yeah. are actual Pakistan. Sorry yeah. if I interrupted. People are actual Pakistan, and still we nurse the image of savior. I mean, savior is greater to us mm. than the one who killed. Yeah. And Absolutely. a non-violent hero is greater to us. Means in uh, our, our own childhood, we have been listening to the story of Hazrat Rabia Basri, or some no, saint, no, no. who saved a dog from dying by offering the dog water. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, raised to the pedestal of sainthood. Mm -hmm. This is what we have been nourished upon. This, is, this was our teachings. And this militant hero, hero, according to their textbook, is a hero, is one who has killed somebody, was something new. It is indigestible for our stomachs mm. means who have been we have been raised on the honey of Sufi message That's right. and we cannot digest it mm. basically and still communities don't digest it true. I would that's love, true. love to add something that there are some other characters too like when we talk about Karbala and Imam Hussain there are not only Imam Hussain but there is Zainab Absolutely. Uh, the sermon of Zainab was a classical document to read even today and the the character of Zainab was it was larger than life it is still larger than life and the value of a lady in the history of Islam that the contribution of a lady in the history of Islam it it is why don't you glorify that why don't you tell the people that this is basically our history and we are proud to have a lady in a leading role. We are not uh, a nation of gender discrimination. We are not. Uh, we are not built in with this programming. It is something very new. Our past is uh, rich with the role of role model of female. Yeah. Either it's Zainab or Sayyida Fatima, Sayyida Khadija, Sayyida Aisha. Those role models are there in our history. And there is an interesting character of Ali Asghar, a child of six months, a child with thrust. Imam Hussain's son. Yeah. Right. A child with thrust. And he contributed in the fight of nonviolence, in the fight for peace, in that age of six months. And he sacrificed his life, knowingly, unknowingly, but he was the part of history. He was the part of that event. He is the symbol of dignity. The youngest martyr. The youngest Kabbalah. martyr. The youngest martyr in Kabbalah. Mr. Jamshed, uh, you rightly talked about the, the peace building, peace primarily, and also the non-violent uh, traits that are there. Prophet himself, he said, when he was coming from his companions and he himself, were, they were coming from a battle. And he said, and he told his companions that now we are going, moving from smaller jihad to the bigger jihad. 
And the bigger jihad is that you fight your own ego. Yeah. And you also keep a check on your own uh, desires that are there, that are not uh, approved by Islam. Talking about that, this moving from smaller jihad to the bigger jihad, and the bigger jihad is not violent. That's what Prophet said, and you were saying that earlier. How do you see this? Well, uh, this is the key message, nectar of uh, the whole message which comes uh, out of this incident is that non-violence. We are talking uh, about it time and again. And it's very difficult uh, to live with communities, harmoniously live in communities. Therefore, it was said that we are moving towards greater jihad. It, it is, means it's very much easy. In, in battlefield, you just unleash your means uh, bestial parts of yourself and you can just attack on each other. Everyone can fight, even animals can fight, but they maybe cannot live harmoniously in a society. They cannot conquer their anger. We can conquer lands, we can conquer people, we can means kill them in the battlefield, but killing one's own dearest, beloved, false ego is very much difficult. So similarly, we, we means uh, see this philosophy translated into tangible and visible philosophy, uh, v v visible action mm -hmm. through this uh, means Vakya Karbala. And we, what we need now is, is uh, means to convey its, this message with full significance, with full spirit, and with full understanding to people. We have uh, means uh, strange tendencies in Pakistan. We just uh, means recite history like sacred books and we f f get the impression as if we are learning uh, earning sawab. This is not means it would be sawab when you will translate it into action, into everyday when action. When you would practice it. When, yeah. when you will be wakeful enough to utter every word with uh, such a wakefulness that it should not harm anyone. Your every action, your every syllable, your must be so means faithful mm. that it should convey the message of non-violence. It should be soothing. Disagree with someone in such a way that it should sound musical to others' eye, uh, ears. Mm. So this is uh, basically what we need to practice, but we have forgot today. And I think me, through media, education, training, whatever means, uh, means possible, we should try to recapture it, uh, its spirit again, rather than just uh, means uh, saying and repeating certain words right. for the sake of uh, means. Uh, and yeah, we, we need to not only recapture, but to reclaim that. Yes, so reclaim, reclaim that. That, that is Reclaiming the most important is. thing. Because yes. Upon that, I would, I would like to, to pay a tribute to Peer Saab for having a center for dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think in this time and, and age where, you know, we can stand a different opinion, I think in this time, we need, uh, you know, centers for dialogue, uh, where people can sit, they can agree to disagree. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how beautifully said, you know, disagree with someone in a way that it's musical to his ears. Yeah. That, that's right. Habib, you have been a lecturer, you have been lecturing as well, uh, you're a teacher, you have been a teacher. And talking about giving this message of the greater jihad that uh, Mr. Tamshir was talking about, how can we teach our young generation, new generation about the greater jihad of keeping a check on your own desires that is also very important and not hating each other and understanding the message of Islam first and then talking about it. How important is that? I think if we uh, study our uh, uh, local indigenous poetry, uh, the Sufi poetry, I think it is replete with uh, uh, you know incidents of killing your own ego. How uh, one of the greatest uh, Sufi shires uh, Hazrat Bulle Shah said that Asmani Udviya Pado Nei Jada Ghar Bait Hai Onu Pado. Right. So the, the basic of, you know, the fundamental teaching of Sufism is to, you know, kill your own ego. Have a check on, uh, on what you want. Are you asking for too much in, in terms of material or emotional or, you know, whatever. So I think... It's primarily seven deadly sins, gluttony, that's you know, true. And, and, and lies and deceit and all that. So keep, yeah. keeping a check on that is, is the greater jihad. Absolutely. So, so I think uh, in our, uh, you know, curriculum, when you talk about, you know, uh, telling this to the coming generations, I think uh, it's, it's uh, really important that we uh, educate our generations on our... Uh, local indigenous knowledge of Sufism uh, because I think uh, 
So uh, I was reading this the other day that whatever is from in, in your language goes straight to the heart. If yeah. you speak to a man in his language, it will go straight to the heart. So I think we need to, you know, capitalize and reclaim, like Shah Sab said, our, our Sufi uh, our traditions and teachings. And what you just said, this also reminds me of another uh, hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu and uh, Prophet said that talk to people according to their level of understanding. Absolutely. So understanding the level of people's understanding is also very important. Yeah. And, and then giving your message. Yeah, exactly. That is what the Sufis did. Yeah. And, and it's a continent, Pino Dasisha. Since you come from a Sufi family, yeah. that is what Sufis have been practicing actually. Yeah. And that is how they have been telling people about Islam. They just translated your sacred text to localized, uh, they gave it a localized narration. Version, right. That's right. it. That's it. It's very simple. You need to reclaim your art today. You need to reclaim your culture today. You need to reclaim your heritage today. Yes. Sufism is nothing beyond your your boundaries, or it's it's not an out of box solution. It's not it's an alien a, concept. Yeah, not at all. it's 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 something very built in thing. You uh, in your day to day life, you you practice it. The humbleness is there. The charity, the concept of charity is there. And uh, I was just thinking, in uh, while my friend was tra uh, talking, that today uh, everywhere we are uh, shouting about water, and it is Muharram tenth, follower of Islam, follower of Hussein, who knows the importance of water more than us. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Firman the Sisha, pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Jamshed Iqbal, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Habib Malik, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And today was the day that we actually pay tribute to Hazrat Imam Hussain Uzzila Ta'ala no? and the family of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll wind up this discussion, today's dialogue, on this point that what our scholars said, the message of Islam is peace, and we have to make people understand what peace is. The message of Karbala and Hazrat Imam Hussain Razi Allah is also peace. We have to practice it and while practicing it, we can make other people understand this thing. Thank you for watching today's program and I'll wind up our program on this couplet. Shah Ast Hussain, Bal Shah Ast Hussain, Deen Ast Hussain, Deen Pana Ast Hussain, Sardad Nada Dast Dar Dast Yazid, Hakka Ke Banai La Ilaha Ast Hussain. Thank you for watching today's program. See you next time. Khuda Hafiz.